Hey gang, sorry for the rocky end of that last video. Totally forgot about some of those other soft nucleophiles. But I'll make sure I do an example of one of those in this video. Now the beautiful part about acid uh, halides and acid anhydrides is that they act almost identically. And you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a generic symmetrical, right, symmetrical because we have the same thing on both sides. This is an acid anhydride, right? I'm just going to real quick draw you the mechanism if we were to attack with CH3MGBR and we have a cleanup step of H+, right? This would be a hard nucleophile, right? So we're expecting double attack. So let's draw the mechanism. It does not matter which carbonyl I attack, right, because it's symmetrical. So if I have my CH3 minus, I'm going to pick this one to attack. So I'll come swing down, attack my carbonyl, electrons go up. I have my piece to the left. I have an O minus up top. I have my methyl group down here and my CH3 up here. I have my tetrahedral intermediate, right? This is the addition step. Now, think about what I have to do. I have my tetrahedral intermediate. I'm going to collapse it. I'm going to swing these electrons down, and now I need a good leaving group to kick off. And remember, this whole big thing is a good leaving group because it's resonance stabilized. So I'm going to break this bond, throw it onto this oxygen, and he'll take an O minus, right? So he'll look like this. He, that's a good, weak, stable conjugate base, and the result of what I had. Just like in the last video, it's a ketone, right? Again, a, a functional group susceptible to another Grignard attack. So that's what I'm going to do. Introduce another Grignard, have them attack the carbonyl carbon, kick electrons up over here, right, I have a CH3 that I already had on here, I now have another CH3, and now an O-. minus. Now all I have to do is protonate with the cleanup step. So you can see how this is absolutely identical to what we just did with acid chlorides. Okay, so now let me show you an example of what we would do if we used a soft nucleophile, something different than enolate or cuprate. One sec. So now that we've seen how to attack an acid anhydride with a hard nucleophile, aka just what it was like when we did it with an acid chloride, now I want to show you guys an example of a different soft nucleophile you can, attack, you can attack an acid anhydride with as well as an acid chloride. So let's see what happens when we have the same symmetric acid anhydride and we throw in some ethanol in an acidic environment. And here's the best part. It functions just like we did with a carboxylic acid having uh, some type of alcohol with an acidic environment. We're going to get an ester. Okay? So everything we did in the last series with carboxylic acids is totally still valid. So what's the first thing we're going to do? Right? Um, what we're going to do, we don't need a protonation step because acid anhydrides are very reactive, more reactive than carboxylic acids. Okay, so we can just go ahead and draw the nucleophile we're working with, aka ethanol, and we can just go in and attack right away. So I'm going to just, I don't know, attack this carbon right here. Oxygen on the ethanol comes in, attacks the carbonyl, electrons swing up, forming our tetrahedral intermediate. Gonna draw the left side the same. I didn't touch this side, right? I have my methyl group down there. I have an O minus up to the left. Oh, we don't need this acid. All right, and then what that gives us? Oh, sorry. We have a O ethyl positive charge. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna hold that tight. Just hang, hang on there for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, we have our tetrahedral intermediate. I'm going to go ahead and collapse it. Take these electrons, swing them down. We know this is our good leaving group. He will go ahead 
and leave. The reason why I waited to touch that proton, right, I'm going to draw the result. We have our carbonyl back. Methyl group stays right there. And now I have my, oh, sorry, had a total brain lapse. I have my OET as well as that hydrogen. Right, I just moved the methyl group from this side to this side. What I'm going to do is, since I produced this, you know, conjugate base that looks like this, I'm just going to have him pick up the hydrogen. No big deal. But the thought process stays the same. We have an acid anhydride with a soft nucleophile. Attack occurs one time, right? This is our product, this ester. You say, okay, acid anhydride, soft nucleophile. Okay, I'm going to attack one time. Then, if you need to draw the mechanism, you go through it. You say, okay, very reactive. I don't need to protonate or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and attack. Add this nucleophile, kick up electrons. You have your electrons here. You have formed a tetrahedral intermediate, right? Then collapse the tetrahedral intermediate by reforming your carbonyl. And at the same time, kicking off your good leaving group. In this case, right, we still have that positive charge on the oxygen. Your good leaving group would come back and just do a little cleanup step for you, and this is what you would get. So the beauty of this is, right, you know, we can take acid anhydrides slash acid chlorides, and we can make esters out of them, right? If I threw in, you know, uh, ethyl amine, I could make an amide. The possibilities are endless. You can mix and match, but just remember, they're going to be soft. They're going to act like soft nucleophiles. Attack occurs once. Remember, remember, remember. The only hard nucleophiles we're dealing with, the hard ones, are going to be your Grignards and your hydride ions coming from LAH, right? From lithium aluminum hydride. Everything else attacks one time. Amines, alcohols, cuprates, enolates, all the rest. Whew. Sorry for the little brain lapse in between there, guys. But you're doing great. I Hopefully this is making sense. Remember, it's the same mechanism over and over again. If you can just see the addition elimination in every single problem, this is cake. Okay? Whew. All right. So now we're going to move on from acid and hydrides. Things get a little bit different with esters. So there's going to be a little bit more to them, but nothing you guys can't handle.